Hey guys, it's Kiana. Welcome back to my channel. As many of you probably already know, I am a final year student at McMaster University and I'm entering my final year of actuarial science. Heads up, if you hear any noise in the background, Dante's working and I can't silence him, so, you know. Anyways, with job recruiting season coming up, I thought it would be a good idea to share some tips on how to land an actuarial internship. Also, a subscriber named Jacqueline actually asked for this video, so hey girl, but um, I thought it would be a good idea anyways. So I'm not going to talk too long, so let's just jump into the video. So I have a few questions I'm going to run through and being the amazing person I am, I actually asked some of my friends that work with me to give me some of their answers to these questions. So I'm going to be inserting those clips throughout the video as well. So the first question I'm going to answer, which I feel like a lot of people always have, is how many exams do you need to pass before actually getting an internship? Okay, short answer to this question, a lot of companies will actually include how many exams they think you should take. They'll probably say something like, one exam is preferred, blah, blah, blah. Safe answer, get one exam done before you apply to internships. You look way more competitive. It shows that you're actually planning to stay in the field. You're not just skating to see if you like it or not um which com which companies don't mind but obviously it's better for them to invest in students that will actually stay in the field now with that said i actually didn't have any exams before starting my internship but i had a lot of other skills that i highlighted on my resume which we'll talk about later to make up for the fact that i had no exams now what do you do if you need to apply for an internship let's say the internship application is due at the end of this month but you can't take your first exam till september what you do in those cases i recommend you put a line where you would have put exam p completed for example put exam p scheduled for september 2020 that kind of makes you look like you're committed to entering the field it also shows that like yo if you're gonna drop that shit on your resume you better kind of try pass because you're kind of promising them that you'll have exam P, kind of, you know? So yeah, if you don't have an exam, just put when you plan to do the exam, but overall try to have at least one. Question two, what skills did you highlight on your resume? Okay, I'm gonna answer this question personally first. So I had no prior actual internship experience. I had internship experience at other companies. First of all, I guess to anyone that's international, I had internship experience outside of Canada. That shit doesn't count. They want Canadian internship, even if it's not actuarial. So anyways, I had no actuarial Canadian internship experience. I had no exams. So my resume had to be a freaking finesse, you know? So that's where, aside from the resume networking, which I'll do a whole video on that because that's something else in itself. But that's where your networking skills and your resume really needs to kick up so good things off the bat to include on your resume coding skills any language even if it's languages people don't use coding languages because coding shows that you can adapt to other languages because the only difference with the different languages is syntax right but you know if you can understand a basic if loop or a do while loop or something like that then you know good asset another thing I would say include communication skills, but don't do that. Actually, what you should include is if you were on a team with people, like, so it doesn't even necessarily have to be that you were in a club and you were the leader, just show that you were involved with other things because saying you have communication skills means nothing. Show some proof, you know? Ooh, another thing you guys should include for sure, anything relating to Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Access in terms of proficiency. Guys, don't put that you're proficient in Microsoft Word. No one cares. Put if it's Excel or Access, that's what's relatable. Other programs that if you guys have the chance to learn it through school, GGY Access is a good thing to put that you know. Um, Excel VBA, of course. Um, SQL. Um, yeah, I don't know what else people use, but... That's what I've used so far, and that's good stuff to have on your resume. Another thing, put any outstanding achievements. Like, dig deep, guys. Like, when you don't have any actuarial things to put, dig deep. 
but don't be putting anything from like high school or middle school that was literally so irrelevant like you don't need to put that you were the leader of the prom committee when you were in grade 11 or grade 12 or whatever that is like give me something more you know so you can put i was the marketing lead in my first year at for whichever club you know don't be putting no foolishness and i know i said i'll make a separate video about it but let me quickly just touch on networking networking is something that really helped me because as i said had no experience blah 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 most of your schools will have networking events especially between september and december of every year Go to them. Go to every single one of them. Give every single person your resume if you can. Speak to them. Don't just speak to them about work stuff. Try to get to know them as people. People, people prefer that. Tongue twister. People prefer when you try to get to know them and have a real conversation with them. I feel like that's how I actually got my internship. Maybe one day if the guy that hired me would like, I'll get him on this video to give you guys some real advice from a recruiter. But until then but yeah just try to keep calm when you speak with recruiters at ne networking events if you live in canada a good place to go is asna um i don't remember what it stands for so i'll just put it up here it's a trail student something association i don't know i'll put it up here but networking big networking events like asna if you're black and you live in the states a good organization that has career events is ieba um i'm actually a part of the toronto affiliate for that um, so if you have any questions and you want to join that one, let me know. Um, specific to Toronto and a Montreal affiliate as well. But don't ask me about anything about IA but the States because I don't know. I really don't. But I can send you the link to the website. I'll put it all down below. And the final big question I guess I'll answer is what should you focus on if you make it to the interview? I'm firstly going to read what my friends said to me because I think they gave you guys better advice than I would have. Because I'm a nervous wreck when I go into interviews. I prep the simple questions like, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And stuff like that. Um, something I'll say before I even read this. In actuarial interviews, guys, they'll actually ask you math questions. <laughs> I've had so many friends. I've had friends that applied at Manulife and RBC. And they go in and they have to like, one of them had to do some coding thing related to R. And another person had to do, like, had to explain something relating to stats. I don't even know, guys. But I think that it's, like, it's hard to tell you how to prep for the questions they'll ask you. Because it could be on any topic. But you just have to, like, I think with those questions, the key to that is trying to give something that's logical, even if you don't know the answer. Okay, so I'm going to start off with what my friend Isabella, hey girl, um, sent me for landing an interview. Tips on landing an interview. Put things on your resume or in your cover letter that make you stand out and show you're interested. Most companies want to find someone who's a good fit with the culture. Also, I got my internships from going to recruiting events through school and talking to people at ASNA. I started going in second year and forced myself to talk to people even if I did not feel qualified just yet. People will remember you more than they... People will remember you more than you think they will. Another tip that she had. I always keep a bank of typical interview questions that I look through before an interview. I also keep a list of all the things I worked on at previous internships, no matter how big or small, and review that before. Also, prepare your questions to ask interviewers. Oh yeah, that's a big one, guys. Always have questions for them. Even if it's like you're saying... Well, what was your experience like at this company? Just go in with a question because always so awkward when they ask you, so do you have any questions? And you're like, um, no, that's everything. Find something to ask. And then another tip from my friend Sierra, definitely have a few of the basic interview questions answered. Example, weaknesses and strengths, but be able to build off of your, oh, that's not good grammar, Sierra. But be able to build off your answers so you stand out. Past experiences that helped you grow, for example. When they ask if you have any questions, make sure you ask something as well. Because it makes you seem like you care more about the job. Guys, you hear that repetition? Means something. Okay, I'm going to summarize what she said. Basically, kind of do your research on the person that's interviewing you. You usually can do that. 
you can also see sometimes if like you're a real stalker like if they have any outside interests outside of if they have any interests outside of work but not too far outside of work you can kind of slide that into the conversation like if you know they like hockey talk about hockey hello canada let's go everybody likes hockey up here except me but you know shoot for that so those are all the main questions i'm gonna answer right now i am recording a video in the next week or two about my personal internship experience why i decided to take a year off school to do the internship and so i'm going to talk about that more then i'll also do a more in-depth guide to networking since a lot of networking conferences are coming up so you guys can have tips on how to like you know prepare for a networking event and all that stuff and i also kind of want to do a deep dive into like building a resume so maybe i'll make that a blog post and share with you guys but yeah all right guys i'm going to go but thank you guys so much for watching this video if you guys have any more questions please 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 leave them in the comment section down below and also maybe other actual students will answer them for you as well and yeah give this video a thumbs up if you liked it comment down below again if you have any questions don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video bye